Good morning, good morning, and welcome, welcome, welcome. If you are joining me for the very first time, my name is Dahlia, and I have been sharing from this channel on Mondays and on Fridays, where Friday is prayer time Friday. Yes, indeed. And on Mondays, we normally go through uh, one of the books in the Bible. And this season, we're going through the book of John. We are in chapter 15. What a great book. What an awesome book. And what a great chapter. I'm telling you, you have to go back and read this chapter and also read chapter 14 because these chapters are foundational and should be a chapter that is really, really practiced and read and studied and, and um, you should have it under your belt as a new believer or as a believer, okay? So it's a wonderful book, but we are in John chapter 15. I think we're getting ready to, we're going to go up to verse 14 today. That's how good it is because you have to break it up to get the meat of it. But again, go back and study it for yourself. You have to study it for yourself. You're going to get more out of it. Because what I'm sharing is just a little cherry on top, but you have to go back and dig, get into that substratum of the book, get into it and study it out and you will glean much, much, much more. So let's get into it. And don't forget to tune in on Fridays. We talked about the How to Fast series. If you didn't catch that, go back and watch How to Fast. We're talking about the biblical way of fasting the reason for fastings, and is fasting still appropriate for today? We also have a how to pray series where I teach you how to pray. Mm, go back and watch that. You know, I, I was in a church. I don't even want to talk too much about it because it is so upsetting to me. And it's so upsetting. But how can you be in a church for 21 years, 21 years, and your leaders, your pastors, don't teach you how to pray. I don't get that. I don't understand. How can you be in a church where you're not taught how to pray? And then you're going to get rebuked by the person who's supposed to teach you how to pray. They're going to rebuke you, even if you're under them for four years or five years or six years or two years, they're going to rebuke you for not knowing how to pray when they didn't teach you how to pray. So on this channel, you're getting meat and potatoes because I have the prayer time on Friday and then the how to pray series and the how to fast series, you know, but again, not popular. It's not popular money, comment, pull the lever. It is sound teaching. So share the video so that others can learn because you can be in a church for 21 years and not be taught how to pray. When I went to my first church, Redeeming, no, well, not my first church, my, yeah, my mature church, because, you know, you grew up in one church and then you mature and you go to the church that God leads you to. And that's one of the first things they teach you as a new believer or a member. They teach you how to pray. 21 years you're in a church and you didn't teach the people how to pray, but then you're going to rebuke them. Uh, I left church today because I'm recording at, you know, in the wee hours. I left church and I was really disgusted. So I don't care. I'm saying it just like how they say what they want to say on their tape. I'm saying what I want to say. I left church and I was disgusted. So praise the Lord. We're going to get into the book of John and this is a wonderful book and we're going to have a good time in John because those of you who have been watching faithfully, you have been learning and that's the main part. And not only do you learn, you learn and you go back and you study the word for yourself and you grow even more, but you are put on the pathway to growth. That's the, that's the, that's the goal of this channel is to inspire you to get on the pathway to studying the word and to praying. That's why I do prayer time on Friday and we do the word on Monday. You have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday to get in the word and to pray. That's it. I just want to inspire you according to God's word, not to what I want, 
Not because I want likes, but I want you to learn. Amen. John chapter 15. We are going to go through verse 9 through 14. We left off where Jesus was talking about if you abide in me. And we talked about abiding means to continue and to remain in the teachings that Jesus was sharing with his disciples. And he says, if you abide in me, you will ask what you will. Go back to that message. It's very powerful. Go back because when you abide in him and his word abide in you and he abides in you, you can ask whatever you will and God says he'll do it. And we talked about that. You know, we're not going to get into it. It was so wonderful. Go back to that. But we're in chapter uh, verse nine and it says this. As the father has loved me, so I love you. Continue in my love. So if we look at the continues, he said, continue in my word. Mm -hmm. Right. Continue in my word. Now he's saying, continue in my love. He says, continue you in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. So you see, now he went from abiding in him and letting his word abide in you so that you can ask and it will be done. And when you abide in him and his word abide in you, you can bear much fruit because without him, we can do nothing. So when his word abide in us, we will bear more fruit, right? Not not fruit on a tree, but fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, temperance, meekness, all of that. We will bear the fruit of the spirit and we will bear fruit where souls are concerned because others will see the love of God being demonstrated in us, being lived in us. And they will want to know that love and they will come and ask and then we will lead them to Christ. So that's fruits also. It's like a double sword, this thing here. Okay. Now he's saying, continue in my love. He says, as the father has loved, even as the father, um, I'm sorry, I have kept my father's commandments and I abide in his love. He says, these things I have spoken unto you that my joy might be in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment. So again, he went from this and he's talking now about love. He said, this is my commandment that you love one another. My God. As I have loved you. So he went from the individual abiding in him, right? Continuing in his word so that you can bear fruit. Now he's saying, my commandment is you love one another. That's missing in the church, big time. Even where I go, it's missing big time. I've never been in a church that is more hateful than the church I'm going to now. I'm saying it, people. I've never been in a hateful church before until this church I'm going to. I can't tell you which church it is. Hateful people in ministry with titles. Hateful. He said, this is my commandment that, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lays down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I commanded you. So Jesus now went from Again, this is a great chapter. He went from us abiding in him and abiding in his word, continuing in his word, doing what he taught us to do, to now giving us the responsibility to walk in love. Love is a very, very precious thing. It's not hard. But many believers and churches all over the world, the believers fail to walk in love but love is important love is the heartbeat of the church and we have to learn to walk in love i've never been in a church and my friend a friend of mine she has a similar situation at her church where people are just competitive with each other they're competing for title they're competing for seat they're competing for the pastor's approval when the bible said study to show yourself approved unto God. And this church is like everybody wants a title. Everybody wants a position. And it's groupy, groupy. And if you're not in their group, they don't talk to you. And it's sad. And when I hear people come to me and they share, it's sad. Because that's not what church is about. We are supposed to follow what Jesus said and love each other 
and I'm going to talk about what love, but this is how important love is. Love is the heartbeat of the church. In the book of Galatians chapter 5, and if you don't take anything away from this lesson, I want you to take this verse and I want you to go back and read it. And it's Galatians 5, chapter 5, and it's verse 6. And the Apostle Paul was talking about some different things. He talked about a story. He says to stand um, fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and we should not entangle ourselves with sin yet again. And then he says in verse 6, for in Christ Jesus, neither is there circumcision avail at anything, nor uncir uncircumcision. So people in this uh, particular church, they thought that the Jews who were circumcised thought that they had a right to heaven and the ones who were uncircumcised needed to be circumcised. And so they were pushing for them, the non-Jews, to become Jews by being circumcised. And he was saying, that's not true. You don't have to be circumcised when you're in Christ. When you're in Christ, you're one. All of that has been done away with. And so he says, what's important above you wanting somebody to be like you or to be of a stature or economic stature or whatever it is, he says, all of that doesn't matter. What matters is this. He says, but faith, but faith, which worketh by love. You see that? He says, but faith, which worketh by love. Your faith. Remember, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And when you have faith and Jesus keeps saying, believe on me, believe on me, believe on me. Then Jesus says, abide in me. In other words, continue in me. Your faith and your continuance in Jesus works by love. Your faith works by love. So if you don't have love for each other, your faith won't work. That's why we're not seeing miracles in the churches. We're not seeing the dead raised and the sick come up from the sick bed. You have to pray and pray and dig out and pray and fast and pray to get a little blessing. Because the church is not walking in love. And when you walk in love, you don't have to do that because God will answer our prayer. Jesus said, this is the commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Then he describes the love. He says, greater love. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lays down his life for his friends. Then he says, you are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Jesus laid down his life for us. He laid down his life for us. So he says, you are my friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. You see that? So we have to now love each other. But you see, in most of these churches, everybody wants a position. It's just sad. So your faith works by love. And love, you know, we're going to talk about love is, 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 is in, in a little bit. But, you know, when you, when I was praying about this lesson, one of the things the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to explain, said this to me. He says, um, before I get to that, you know, when you don't walk in love or when your disposition does not reflect love, it hinders you. When you're out of love, it hinders you and it halts you and it stops your faith. It plugs your faith. When you don't walk in love, it plugs your faith. But one of the things I want to make sure, because sometimes people take advantage and when somebody loves you, they take advantage of your love. Just because you're loving someone, it doesn't mean that, let me share what, let me read it for you. Because when I was praying, this is what I received. It says, love doesn't mean that you change who you are for someone. Now, I'm not talking about bad behavior. I'm talking about changing who you are, your authentic self. Love, love doesn't mean that you change who you are for someone. Example, because I want to give an example of what I mean. I don't mean you go do wicked things and don't change. You have to change your wicked ways. It's not what I'm saying or not what the Lord is saying. 
So in other words, if somebody is rude to you or if somebody is mean to you and disrespectful, you can still remain in love but not put up with the disrespect but not put up with the rudeness, but not put up with the wickedness of the person. So you can still walk in love and someone is mean to you or rude to you and you can still walk in love and correct them. They're not going to like you, but you still love them when you correct them. You see a lot of people when they correct and they, um, you know, rebuke somebody, they don't do it in love. They, you know, or they do it and then they turn around and they hate the person or they malice the person. You can't malice someone, you know, after you rebuke them or you don't agree with them. Love doesn't mean you change who you are, but, you know, in other words, you don't have to agree with somebody who you think is wrong. You are your authentic self. OK, so this doesn't mean that you stay in sin because love, love, love. No, it doesn't mean you change your authentic self to accommodate somebody who is in sin or wrongdoing. You love them, but you still can make correction. There is a scripture in first Corinthians. I wrote it down for you. Um, it's I'm sorry. It's in Ephesians chapter four verse 15. And that's another chapter I wanted to read to these verses. Because the Bible said to speak the truth in love. Speak the truth in love. And that's what I mean when the Holy Spirit gave that to me. I done forgot a, that scripture came up. He says speak the truth in love. So that's what I mean when I say don't change your authentic self. Because just because you walk in love doesn't mean you put up with garbage. Doesn't mean that you put up with someone dumping on you, with someone spitting in your face, with someone condescending, you know, being uh, condescending to you. You don't have to put up with someone insulting you. You can kindly speak the truth in love and love them and not malice them and forgive them. You understand? You speak the truth in love. You're not a punching bag for nobody. That's the point. You are not a punching bag. So just because you love doesn't mean you become a punching bag. That's what I mean by saying you don't change your authentic self and become a punching bag because you feel like, well, I have to walk in love. No, you don't become a punching bag and you don't go get into a cult like religion because you feel like you're walking in love. Ephesians 4 talks about speaking the truth in love and I want to read a little bit of that for you so you understand what the spirit of the Lord shared with me when he says love doesn't mean you change who you are so Ephesians chapter 4 verse 15 it says this let me see I'm going to start from verse 11 okay so you get a full understanding of what the apostle is saying. He says, and he gave some apostles and he gave some prophets, some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. So he's talking to the church in Ephesians and in Ephesus. And he says that God appointed different people in the church with different positions, you know, so that some are apostles, some are prophets, some are teachers. And he says, this is the reason. For the perfecting of the saints. So the pastors, the evangelists, the teachers, all of the leaders, they are appointed by God, right? For building up the saints. We have to teach you. It says for the maturing, that word perfecting means the maturing of the saints. For the work. So we are teaching you for the work of the ministry. So whatever ministry God calls you to, we are perfecting and maturing you for the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body, we have to build you up so you can walk holy. We have to build you up so you can stand in the time of trouble. He says, until we all come to the unity of faith, till we all become one in the faith. And of knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto a mature man, till you grow up, till you grow up. Unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of, of Christ. So we are teaching you the word because you have to grow up into Christ Jesus. And then he says that we henceforth, listen, listen real good. That we henceforth be no more children 
So there's a time when you have to grow up. A baby doesn't say a baby all the time. You have to grow up in the Lord. He says that we henceforth be no more tossed to and fro and carried about like children with every wind of doctrine, every cunning craftiness, mm -hmm, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. So he's saying that he doesn't want us to get caught up in the doctrine of men. The doctrine of deceitful men, those deceitful preachers and prophets. God does not want you to get entangled with deceitfulness of these people. Money come it, money come it, pull the lever down. And the craftiness of men where, whereby they line wait. They target you to cheat you, to deceive you. And that's why he has us teaching. He has pastors, teachers, prophets to teach you the word till you're mature so that you don't get tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, by the deception of these people who are charlatans out there. And then he says, but speaking the truth in love that you may grow up into him, him who Christ Jesus into all things and Christ who is the head even Christ Jesus from whom the whole body fitly joined together compacted that which every joint supply it according to the effectual working of the measure of every part which make it the body increase so in other words we as the body of Christ he uses a physical body to describe the Christians who are in Jesus. We are like a body. You've got a head, you've got the hands, you've got the fingers. Every part of you fits together. My fingers fit my hands. My hands fit my shoulders. My shoulders fit my body so that my whole body from my head to toe can function as one. As Christians, we're supposed to function as one. That's why he says, love one another. The hand cannot say to the foot, I don't love you and I don't need you because the hand needs the foot and the foot needs the hand. The whole body fits, that's what he's saying. It fits together. It's compacted together where, it's, where joint supply joint. And so we have to grow together and we have to be in unity so that there is strength. But instead of being in unity where there's strength, you have people in the church just out for themselves. That's why the church is a mess today. Because many are just in it for themselves and not for what God has called them to do. And so Jesus is saying here, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. So when you keep his commandments, you have no choice but to walk in love. And that's why I say it's a very slippery slope because slippery slope, because when you see people not walking in love, you question if they are what walking in the word, if they're obedient. When you're not obedient to the word of, the, of God, you're out of love. You're walking out of love. You're not walking in love. So there is a disconnect there. So we as believers, each person, I remember my pastor, Pastor Sarah used to say, listen, don't worry about the person next to you. You do your part when you do your part. So if you're a hand and your job is to wave, you do your part. Don't worry about the foot. Don't criticize the foot. You do your part. And when you do your part, and if everybody will do their part and stop fighting each other, then the body will function. You see that? The body will function. But if you stop what you're doing to worry about the foot, then you won't be doing your part. So each part of the body fits joins together fits together and works together like your body when you get up in the morning and you say i'm gonna take a shower can you imagine your foot telling your brain i don't feel like taking a shower this morning so i'm not getting off this bed no it doesn't work like that the foot has to cooperate with the brain and the hand got to cooperate with the foot because the hand got to take off the clothes the foot walks you to the bathroom, but the hand got to take the clothes and wash with the soap, you know, and the hand takes the instruction from the brain because the brain is going to say, 
Brush your teeth first. Wash your face. Soap here, soap there. It all joins together. And as Christians, we join together as one body. And there's too much, my old bishop used to say, schism. You know, schism, but they say schism. And there's too much of that in the church. Everybody's about self. That's not what Jesus wants. He says, listen, greater love has no man than this, that you lay down your life for your friends. And Jesus says, and I'm calling you friend. Why? Because Jesus laid down his life for us. Therefore, we are friends of Jesus. So when he talks about love, let's talk a little bit about love because that's what I want to kind of end on. Go back and read Ephesians chapter four. Read that chapter in its entirety and you'll get what I'm saying. You have to speak the truth in love. It doesn't mean you change who you are. If somebody's beating on you, your husband is beating on you and punching you and you feel like you have to stay out of love. That's not love. That's a sickness. That's obsession. You need to call the police and you need to get to a place of safety and never return again because once they hit you, they'll keep hitting you. So that's not love. Love is not telling you to stay with a man who beats you, husband or not. That's not love. Okay. So that's what I mean. Don't change who you are. You speak the truth in love. Now, if he gets help, that's another story. But you don't stay there because people like that, they will come at you again. And when they come at you again, you may not live to tell the tale. Okay. So speak the truth in love. What is love? He doesn't leave us hanging. So if you go to 1 Corinthians 13, this is a very famous chapter. They speak it at weddings. They speak it at different uh, events, anniversaries. So let's talk about love because I think when we, we need to talk more about love so people know what love is and what love is not. What love is not. 1 Corinthians 13 says this. If I speak in tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a, a clanging symbol. In other words, I'm a noisy person. And the apostle, he begins the chapter on love and he talks about the gifts. Now, remember in Ephesians, let me go back there. Remember in Ephesians chapter four, I talked about the body fitly joining together and speaking the truth in love. And in Ephesians 4, he said, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the edifying of the church, right? Here, he's talking about the gifts of the Spirit. Because the gifts of the Spirit, there's gifts of faith, gifts of speaking in tongues, gifts of healing, different things. So he's saying, if you're operating in the gift now, the gifts. And you don't have love. You're like a noisy pot cover. Can you imagine? You have the power to raise the dead. But if you don't have love, you are nobody. And God doesn't see you. He says, if I speak in tongues of men and of angels and I do not have love, I am like a ringing gong and a, and a clankling cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy, listen, if you have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all the mysteries and all the knowledge, and if I have absolute faith so that I can move mountains, you see that? You can have faith that say to Mount Everest, be thou gone and the mountain be moved. And he says, but if you don't have love, you're nothing. I didn't write it. Don't come for me. He says, you are nothing. You are nothing. And that's why when I read John, I went first to Galatians 5 verse 6 that says, your faith works by love. Your faith works by love. So you've got to get your love tank full. You've got to check that love tank. Because you have to have the love of God. And the love of God doesn't mean that you are a punching bag for somebody. The love of God doesn't mean you're a doormat. You speak the truth in love. Sometimes you got to speak the cold hard truth. But you speak it in love. And you allow restoration. And you allow forgiveness. 
He says, if I have the faith to move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all my possessions to the poor and I um, surrender my body even to be burned, but I do not have love, he says, I gain nothing. I gain nothing. I didn't write it. Go to it and read it for yourself. Now he's going to tell you a little bit about love. He says, love is patient. Speak the truth in love. Love is patient. Love is kind. You can't be mean and, and offensive. You can't be combustible. You can't be obnoxious and condescending and think it's okay. It's not okay. Love is kind. All those things are not kind. So if what you're doing is not kind, then it's not love. Love does not envy. You can't envy what somebody has. You can't walk around thinking you're all that and a bag of chips and Coca-Cola on the side because you got $2 in the bank. That's not love. He says, love does not envy. It does not boast. I just said that. It does not boast. So just because you got a little job, a little degree, you think you're better than your neighbor, love does not boast. True love does not boast. You got a little wifey, you're boasting. Love does not boast. Love is not proud. Don't go there. Because God hates pride. Pride goes before destruction. He says, love is not rude. I said that. If you're rude, it's not love. Love is not self-seeking. If all that person want is about themselves, 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 that's not love. You speak the truth in love to these kinds of things. He says, love is not easily angered and love does not keep an account of wrongdoings. So somebody wrongs you, you know those people who can come back and recite everything you did from 10 years ago? Lord help. When you have those people who can recite what you did 10 years ago and when you were a child, it's a shameful thing. Love does not keep account of wrongs. Love does not take pleasure in evil. So if you see somebody doing something wrong, you don't take pleasure in it. You don't take pleasure in evil. Somebody stealing, somebody selling drugs, making money, and you're taking that drug money. You don't. You don't. A lot of these women... They're out there dating drug dealers and all these criminals and hiding all these criminals and drug dealers and, and reaping. That's not love, honey. That's greed. That's disgusting, to, 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 to be honest. Love takes no pleasure in evil, no pleasure whatsoever. But what love does is love rejoices in truth. You see what Ephesians says? Speak the truth in love. <clears throat> Love rejoices in truth. So when the truth comes out, love will rejoice. The only people who don't like truth are people who are wicked and evil. And they don't like the truth. But, but love rejoices in truth. Love will bear all things. Love will believe all things. Love will hope all things. And love will endure all things that's truthful. It says love never fails. So you can love a person and they may get sick. Or they may have some faults, not beaten now. I'm not talking about somebody putting their fist and kicking you. That's not love. Get out. Call the police and get out. But sometimes some people have some, you know, weaknesses or they've been through some challenges. It says love never fails. So love does not give up on someone. You know, if you have a husband and he has a dream to be... Let's say he has a dream to be a doctor and he's struggling. You don't give up. Love not, never fails. Love won't give up. You'll help him along the way. He says, watch this now. So the apostle says, where there is prophecy, it will cease. Prophecies will come to an end. Where you're speaking in tongues, tongues will stop. Where you have knowledge, knowledge will end. For we know in part and we only speak in part. But when that which is perfect, meaning Christ is come, everything else is irrelevant and a non-factor. Then he closes out and he says this. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I talk as a child. He says, I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I set aside my childish ways. 
He says, we see through a glass very dimly. But he says, but when we behold Christ face to face, what we know in part, we will know fully, even as we are known. Now these three remain. So he talks about the three giants. Faith, hope, and love. Those are the three giants in life. Your faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these three is love. Simple. So he says, we know in part, and when Jesus comes, then we will know the whole. Right now, we are living by faith, but when Jesus comes back, then we will know the whole or the full. But in the meantime, you have to walk in love. He says, I command you that you love one another as I have loved you. I lay down my life for my faith friends and I call you friends and he says you are my friends and if you are my friends you will do as I've commanded you my friends it's time for us to fill up our love tank in the body of Christ we need to stop tearing down each other we need to build up if you see somebody and they, they like to sing but their voice is not all together there build them up encourage them tell them sweetheart Keep at it. Keep practicing. Keep taking your lessons. You get there. If you see somebody and they want to become a teacher, encourage them. Don't tear them down. If you see someone and they're trying to, you know, whatever it is they're trying to do, build them up. Don't tear them down. Don't go stealing someone's wife and someone's husband. Build them up. And if you see somebody and they come in and they're new, Talk to them. Don't be, you know, trying to let them get into your group and they got to pass your litmus test. Stop it. Jesus said to love. And love means you don't boast, you don't envy, you're not rude, you're not exclusive. Huh? You walk into some church and it's like it's exclusive. You can't even get your foot in that department because that department is <clears throat> special forces. What is that? You see what I mean? So he commanded us. He's not asking you. He's not asking me. He's telling us to love one another the way he loved us. And he loved us enough to lay down his life for us that we might live. Because of him, we live. That's what the songwriter says. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because Jesus lived, we can now live. We should allow other people to live and grow because of us. Add. And you know when you're not in love, when you're not adding to someone. Add to someone. Build them up so they get to where they want to get to. Because guess what? Someone else will add to you and build you up and get you to where you get to. I wouldn't be where I am today without the wonderful people that God put in my life. In fact, had it not been for the wonderful people in my life, my church situation that I earlier talked about, I would have left jump ship. But the people that God put in my life encouraged me to stay and to, you know, let God work it out. Let God use me in whatever capacity he wants to use me to help to bridge the gap and to bring it together. So I have to suck it up. Even though I started out and I was like, er, 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 I have to suck it up, go back and pray and see how God wants me to approach the situation to see what God wants me to do and to add and not tear down. Sometimes we get overwhelmed because of people and situation, but then I have to now digress, go back and say, okay, father, what should I do to make it better? So when your love is not making something better, when it's not, you know, adding, when it's not building and edifying, you've got to check that. So fill up your love tank. And remember, love does not mean you put up with foolishness and insolence. Don't put up with insolence from anybody or offensive behavior, degrading behavior. That love doesn't mean you take that. It means that you turn around and you speak the truth in love and say, that is wrong. That's not right. Don't do that. But you still love and you do it in love. You can be firm, firm, firm as cement and still be in love and not let anybody walk over you because love does not do that. You don't take, you don't sit down and write down every little evil they do, but if they do the evil, you tell them and if they repent, you forget about it. 
and you move on. You don't go back next year and says, well, two years ago, I told you the same thing. And this is, this is how you know when the love is low. When someone comes to you and says, you always do that. This is the second time you do that. That's not love because you don't keep account of it. Once you forgive, you forgive and you forget, you move on, right? But it doesn't mean that you're a punching bag or you allow people to take advantage of you. No, you stand firm and you speak the truth in love. You understand? So go back and study it so that you get the full meaning and you get what the word is saying. Read, read Ephesians 4. He was talking about the body and the church and the pastors and preachers, the purpose of what the pastors and preachers, what we're here for, so that we build you up so that we as an entire body fits together, join together and work together. When we work together, then we will function in the love of God and where there is unity, there is much strength. We we need the power of God back in the church. We need the power of God. We need to see more healings and deliverances in the church. And if we start to walk in love, our faith will work by love. Jesus said, I command you, love one another as I have loved you. We've got to work on our love. We've got to fill up our love tank, myself included. Let's work on our love because of the three giants, love is the greatest. Don't you want to be a partaker of love? Don't you want to be a giver of the love of God? Let's work on that together. As Jesus said, he wasn't giving an opinion and he wasn't giving a speech. He gave a command to love one another and we have to do better at loving each other the way Jesus loved us. Amen. Thank you for watching. Share the video with someone. Let them learn. Know that God loves you and I love you and I appreciate every one of you who watch the sermons every week, every Monday and every Friday. I appreciate you and I pray that you're learning and you're growing in the Lord. Um, and I pray for you that God will continue to bless you, cause his face to shine upon you, and to keep you in his perfect peace always. So thank you for watching. Share the video. Like the video. And if you have not subscribed, why not subscribe? So thank you. Go with God and continue to be a blessing because you are blessed to be a blessing. Thank you for watching.